Kendall, why don't you pray and then we'll get started. Love to. Jesus, thank you for this day, for another week, um, for this time this morning that we get to spend with you um, and with each other here online. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you would lead us and guide us this morning, that you would bring to us uh, the things that you have to show us, um, the things that uh, we can share with each other and, and the way that we can uh, just accept and love the people around us, that we can be one another to, to the people around us on a daily basis. Uh, God, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. Uh, we love you and we need you. And we pray all of these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. So if you were with us uh, this weekend, Phil kind of kicked off our series um, on, well, our week series on accept one another. Um, and he talked a lot about what it looks like to value people over preferences. And that's actually one of our church values uh, is that we want people to know that they matter more than the things that we prefer. And for many of us, that might come more naturally, but for a lot of us, it's really difficult. And so what we're gonna do today is we're going to look at some of those examples um, and then we're just gonna kind of break it down and talk about it. So um, we're gonna start in Romans 14, uh, one through four. Actually, before we do that, it looks like I'm balancing multiple screens, friends, so thank you for your patience. Um, Sarah says here, good morning. Everyone just got back from an hour walk boat. Hmm, Vernon does not like to do them due to motion sickness. I don't have so much. That's nice. If you don't yeah. have the motion sickness. Yeah, right. Uh, and then Crystal just gives a life hack here. Um, fresh cut pineapple cuts the salt water and nausea when seasick. I did not know that. Did not know either. Sherry, good morning. Good morning. All right. So I'm going to read here, Kendall, in um, Romans 14. And then we'll just talk about... Uh, the whole passage here, but really focusing on that beginning part. Uh, and then I just dropped a, a note in here, everyone, where it says welcome in the ESV. If you go to uh, other versions, and I dropped in from the NIV, the word there is actually accept. Uh, and so we'll, we'll kind of go back and forth between those two words. But as we're working through today, we're going to be using the word accept uh, as the word. So as for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. So Kendall, Phil talked a little bit about this uh, idea this weekend when it comes to food. Do you want to just kind of break that down just a little bit? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, part of the deal here with the, the food is food was such an important part of um, religion and the religious culture of the day. And so the, there was a lot of discussion constantly about what the food we eat, what is, what is okay to eat, what is not okay to eat, what should we be eating, what shouldn't we be eating. And I mean, just assuming like with everything else, when you have differing opinions on things, it became something that would be a block between pe in people's relationships, between people's relationships. And so um, here you see, you know, like the, f the first, the first verse says, is for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. Like, don't approach people with this idea that the only reason you're approaching with them is so that you can prove yourself right, so that you can give your own opinion. Approach them with love and don't, you know, if it's about the things you eat, if it's about what they eat versus what you eat, we have to take that block, that relational block out of the way and be accepting of one another. Yeah. And, and I love how he jumps down, uh, into verse three, at the very end of verse three, and he says, for God has welcomed him, for God has accepted him. And and we have to remember the same about us. Uh, so one of the things that 
Tony Evans, I went back and I watched his mm. uh, message on accepting one another. And one of the things that he really dives into is this idea that when we accept others, we're then experiencing the freedom and we're giving people the, the opportunity to experience the freedom that uh, Jesus died to give us. But when we create more rules and more regulations and more guidelines for people to jump through those hoops for people to jump through, we're, we're holding them in bondage and not allowing them to live in this freedom that, that Jesus gives us. Right. And I thought it was such a great picture of that. You know, he's using food here, but what are we, what are we using? Right. Um, is, is it the music that, that we prefer? If you don't prefer the same music than we, that we do, then we've got a problem and I can't accept you for who you are. Um, I don't like the way you dress. And so I can't accept the way that you come to church or the way that you engage um, outside of church. So what are those things? What are those kind of unwritten rules that we're expecting people to conform to that aren't actually biblical rules at all? For sure. Yeah. Um, so, so many things like, you know, what you do with your free time, where you spend your money, how you spend your money, how much money you spend. Like, uh, like we judge people on so many of those things, the neighbors that live next door to us, the people that we work with, it's so, so easy to fall into those things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and what's interesting is we make these things ultimate right. instead of remembering that they might be convictions for us. Phil talked this weekend about what God condemns um, mm -hmm. in the Bible means absolutely do not do that. What he condones means you need to do that. It's good for you. And then everything else in the middle are these convictions. And everyone mm -hmm. has personal convictions that really are between you and God. You and the Holy Spirit is the one who's revealing those things to you. Um, but that is between you and God. That's not for you to impose on others. Uh, and Debbie has a great illustration right here. I don't like who you support politically. So if I can't, if you won't agree with me politically, then right. I can't accept who you are. In fact, I don't even think you're a Christian if you can support that person. I, I've heard people say that, and I don't think that would be what Paul would agree with right here. He's saying, you need to accept him and not fight about opinions, right. political or otherwise, because God has accepted that person and God has accepted you as you are. Exactly. Uh, any other thoughts on that passage? I think uh, I like at the at the end of four when it's talking about you know not to pass judgment on the servant of another is before his own master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. I mean that's that's one of my favorite parts about our relationship with Jesus is he's the ultimate judge. We don't have to be. And so like on this earth, we're, we're called to accept people and Jesus, God's going to change their heart, is going to make a difference in their lives, is going to convict them where they need conviction. And, and we can for sure speak into that, but out of an accepting, loving way. Um, and I, I just, I love that. Sometimes I feel like I can use it as a cop out, but I also, I just, it's, it's one of those things that I, I just am so thankful for that like, I don't have to judge, you know? That's that's God's job. Right. Right. Uh, and we've talked a lot about um, being really careful about the standard that we hold non-Christians to. Mm -hmm. it, it looks a little different. Um, you know, if Kendall noticed something in my life that was absolutely not good for me and unbiblical, it would be right for Kendall to come to me and say, hey, I don't I don't know what's going on here, but this is not this is not good for you. Right. And and this is why, and I think you know that, um, but that's within relationship. That's within the context of both of us uh, being Christians. Mm. But if, if I were to do that to somebody else who doesn't follow Jesus, I would be holding them to a standard that's not their standard. Mm. Uh, it's not God's standard for them because they don't know. And so being really careful about how we engage with people that don't know Jesus um, I'm going to drop this in the in the chat here too, but it was a definition that I came across for the, the word accept. Um, welcome joyfully, welcome kindly, receive positively. Mm -hmm. So if you're kind of looking for a framework of what accepting looks like, I just thought that was kind of um, helpful. And one of the things we talked about this weekend too is 
accepting people as they are where they are. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's the first thing is not expecting them to rise up to where we are or where we think they should be, but kind of looking at them right where they are. For sure. So that is going to bring us into this next uh, chapter in Romans, just one chapter over. Uh, but Paul kind of gets stuck in this idea. So can we, we read this section here and then we'll talk about it? Yeah. Uh, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the, reproach, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. So one of the reasons that I love this passage is it really brings together a couple of our one another's mm -hmm. and it just goes to show how they all work together. Uh, one of the things that we talked about early on, uh, Kendall, is that really love one another is that overarching one another and that all the other ones really fall up, fall in sure. that one. Um, but we're in here we've got um, building up one another. We've got encouraging one another, um, living with this endurance and encouragement, living in harmony. Um, and then it's talking about unity and ending with accepting. Uh, and I just think it's such a great example of how these are going to work together and why it matters that they do. Um, so what in this passage really stands out to you when we're talking about accepting? Um, man, there's, there's a lot of stuff in here that is just so good. The, the first sentence, um, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak, not to please ourselves. Like, I think a lot of times we, we, we take opportunity to just kind of pull back into our own selves, into our own lives, into our own stuff. And like, it says here, we have an obligation to the failings of the weak. We have an obligation to people who you know, are, are farther behind us in our faith who, who don't know Jesus, we, we have an obligation to bring them along. And it's so easy for us to just go, I'm good. They're fine. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to, I'm going to do my, my own yeah. uh, thing over here. The other thing I, I just love in verse three, Christ didn't do that. He said, he says the reproaches of those who reproached you, like the people that took stuff out on you, the people that sinned against you, their sin, it was against you, but if it, it fell on me, I was still the one that took care of that. You know, I, I just, I love that, um, yep. that verse. Yep. Um, and I love that it, it really pulls it together starting in verse five, may the God of endurance and encouragement, so remembering who God is, mm -hmm. uh, grant us to live in harmony in this unity with one another because of Jesus. Um, and that together we can glorify God uh, and then he's just kind of putting a bow on it and he's saying, because of all of that, because of what Kennel talked about, but because of what I just said, accept one another as Christ has accepted you for the glory of God, like to praise mm -hmm. God. Uh, and, and we talked about how the way that we treat others is, is really how we're treating God. Um, and I read a quote that said, God takes the way we treat others very personally and I thought that was such a neat way of thinking about it. And, and we see that again here where our role really is to be loving, to be kind, to be accepting, to be gracious, um, to live with this unity and harmony and peace, uh, to be bearing with one another. That's our role. Everything else is for God. Um, and for us, that should give us this freedom. It should, it should release us from this idea that we have to do something uh, but for whatever reason, we, we have a hard time doing that. We feel like, and I don't know if it's a control. I mean, maybe you can speak into this. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's a control thing where, where we feel out of control if people aren't doing or saying or acting the way that we want them to, or we think they should, but there's something there where we're having a really hard time with that. 
Yeah, I think um, for me, it always it always comes anytime you talk about accepting other people who are different than you. You talk about loving your people around you, your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends. It, there's always this idea of like, I just I just talk about doing that without an agenda, and yet there there is always a little bit of an agenda if those people don't know Jesus. We're called, we're, we're commanded by Jesus to go into the world and to, to love people, to, to accept people. Like these are things that we're told to do. So we have to make sure that, that our doing that doesn't, like if they don't immediately buy in, if they don't reciprocate the acceptance or the love, like we still continue to do that even if we don't, get back what what we were hoping for even if they don't immediately accept jesus even if they're not kind back to us it jesus doesn't put like a bunch of like and then if they don't do you know it's 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 the kind of thing where like we just continue to do what we what we've been called to so i think to me that's always that's always a tricky thing here because if you go if you go into it thinking i've got to do this i hate my neighbor i don't really accept what they do but i've got to do this because this is what god calls me to do people see through that in a heartbeat they know you're being phony they know you're being fake so i think it's 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 having our hearts changed by jesus to those people around us and then and then seeing how you know regardless of their response we're accepting and loving them yeah that's good. It's almost like don't look at others through the lens of your own preferences. Look at others sure. through the lens of who Christ sees them as. For sure. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Sarah said it right here, right? God takes it personally the way that we treat others because he made them, whether mm. they are a believer or not, criminal or not, whoever they are, they are made in, in God's image. And so when we look at people as image bearers, we can't help but see them as more like Jesus sees them um, as opposed to who we are kind of molding them to be in our minds. Yeah. Dom jumps back to uh, our prior discussion. When I react poorly to another's input, I am showing that this is an area where I'm not teachable. Mm. And then he says, it's just not about us. And I think that's so hard for us to remember right. sometimes is that it is about others and and ultimately it's about jesus right so uh that's good all right so we're gonna jump down now into this uh story if you've if you followed anything i've done for any amount of time you know that i become super super excited about the way that jesus interacts with women specifically uh and so we're gonna see an interaction that jesus has um, he is in the house of a Pharisee named Simon. Um, this is pretty early on in his ministry in Luke's gospel. Uh, we're not going to read the whole thing. We're just going to kind of pull out uh, different different portions of it, specifically with this interaction with this woman and then uh, Simon's reaction to what was going on. So I'm going to read this and then we'll kind of uh, go with this. But what I really want you to be thinking about as we're reading is, what is Jesus doing? What can we learn from him? How is he interacting with this woman? Uh, and how is he showing acceptance of who she is, where she is, and why does that matter? Mm. So uh, starting in verse 36, one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table of the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment and standing behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him for she is a sinner. And because Jesus knows what he's thinking says, uh, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered it, say it teacher. And so then Jesus goes through, um, a little story, another parable that, that he is so uh, famous for doing. And then we're going to jump down into 44. And then it says, um, then turning toward the woman, Jesus said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet 
but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, therefore I tell you her sins, which are many are forgiven for she loved much, but who is forgiven little, little loves, ugh. but who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. So uh, then he's going to go on and he ends it uh, with this. Who is this? The, the people are saying, who is this? Who even forgives sins? And Jesus says to the woman, your faith saved you go in peace. Yeah. So one of the things, uh, first of all, that we notice here is Luke very clearly describes who this woman is. He doesn't mm -hmm. give her a name, uh, but he does give her some attributes. And so he describes her as a woman in the town who lived a sinful life. Uh, and, and what I've got in here uh, actually says a woman of the city who was a sinner. Most people mm -hmm. believe she was probably a prostitute. Mm -hmm. um, a woman of the city would have described a woman who was living a, a different kind of lifestyle like that. So he very clearly is describing that this is not the kind of person uh, that a religious teacher would be hanging out with. Totally. Definitely not a, a well-respected man and definitely not a Pharisee. Yeah. I, I, I love, I love the fact that Luke, he doesn't even mention her name here. And it is, we see this, we see this over and over throughout the gospels that, you know, the, even, even the people closest to Jesus, even the people that are, that have followed Jesus, that have learned from Jesus, they, they still make the same mistakes. They still, you know, her, her name wasn't important. It was what she was about. It was who she was. That was the problem here. And, and Jesus is like, Oh, I'm about to turn that on its head, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think I, I just, I just love the fact, like we need to give ourselves grace because the, the, the men that walked with Jesus on a daily basis, they constantly got it wrong. And, and so we're going to make mistakes and we're not going to do it right. And all that thing. Um, there's, there's always going to be grace for us, uh, in that, but I just uh, when I when you see things like that, you're like, the 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 right thing would have been to mention this woman's name and what a blessing this was to Jesus. And it was like, nope, I immediately had there was immediate judgment, um, you know, from Simon and from everyone else in the room. Yeah, yeah, and and this one only talks about his interaction between him and Simon, um, but there are other examples of where his own disciples are like. Right. What are you doing? Right. 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 <laughs> you know who exactly. you're talking to? Yes. And Jesus is like, yeah, I I absolutely do. It's um, what I do. It's, yeah, it's what I do. It's what I do. <laughs> so uh, Leslie here says, uh, my note says that people change more quickly in an atmosphere of love than in an atmosphere of criticism. Mm. I'm not sure I've ever changed for the better in an atmosphere of criticism. Yeah. Not and especially not in a in a personal relationship. You know, there's 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 places where you receive feedback or criticism, maybe in a in a work setting or you know. But like usually in a usually in a interpersonal relationship, that just that just makes things hard right. or more difficult. You know, yeah. Right. Uh, so to give kind of a visual picture of what's happening here, when we talk about reclining at the table. Uh, the tables at this time would have been very low to the ground and kind of in the middle of the room. But the way that that people would have sat at the table would have been on the floor and then they would have kind of reclined where their body was toward the table with their feet back towards the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we talked about this when we were talking about the uh, Last Supper um, that Jesus had with his disciples. But very same uh, picture here where Jesus's feet are back toward the wall. And so when it says that she was standing behind him at his feet, that's what it meant. So mm -hmm. his, his body would have been up towards the table with his feet behind him. Um, and she's coming up and, and she's using her tears, her, her deep sorrow. And actually one of my notes says it could have been uh, tears of thankfulness and reverent mm -hmm. awe, which I thought was so what a different way to look at that. Um, not just of repentance, but of, of awe to be in the presence of God. Um, and so she's using, using her tears to wet his feet, which 
we talked about last week would have been filthy with not just dust and dirt, but whatever else he may have stepped in along mm -hmm. the way to Simon's house. And then she's using her hair to wipe his feet. And then this alabaster jar of ointment, which could have been quite costly um, to anoint his feet. So it is an absolute act of surrender and servitude. Um, and it's a very humble act also to be, I mean, if you, it would have been humble to do with a towel, she's doing it with her, with her hair. Uh, Sarah says, if the woman had tried to do this Simon to Simon, he possibly would have kicked her in the face. Not wrong, but yeah. Jesus probably smiled at her and helped her to her feet before sending her away. Hmm. Just that tenderness and that kindness, you know, you go back to that definition of acceptance, um, welcoming with kindness for sure. That's, that is yeah. what Jesus would do. Dom says, is the Pharisee saying the woman gave Jesus cooties? <laughs> the, wo <laughs> the woman, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. Uh, Kendall, just, you know, Dom, Dom uses his Domisms um, <laughs> to help us better understand thing. Thanks. For and, sure. And absolutely right. The, the main thing here is this, this acceptance of, uh, Jesus seeing who this woman was, not what she was doing or not what she had done. He For was sure. seeing her as a person. He was seeing her as uh, God's daughter. And I think that's, we talked about that. That's just difficult for us to do when we know someone's story, or at least we assume we know stories. Uh, we treat them accordingly. Uh, Peggy here says, my notes say only those who realize the depth of their sin can appreciate the complete forgiveness God offers them. Um, do we appreciate the wideness of God's mercy? Mm. That's a great question. So good. So good. A and what happens when we don't accept people and we assume that we're better than them, we're not accepting God's mercy. We're not recognizing our need for God's mercy in our own lives. Hmm. Um, and then Miss Allie Weersma, welcome. An acid reflux nightmare. Yes, lay, laying laying to eat like that. I think right. If you've got <laughs> if you've got some if you've got some issues with heartburn and acid reflux, that would not be a good way to eat eat dinner. I always think that would be the most so so uncomfortable laying on your <laughs> arm or you know. When you think about it, like you, if you're getting tired while you're eating, yeah. Like next thing you know, your face is in your plate. Right. <laughs> I, I think I think the one of the things that sticks out to me here too is when when Jesus comes back to Simon and says, like Simon, you didn't even you didn't even do your job. Like you know, when you're welcomed into someone's house back in biblical days, you you would have someone wash their feet, and and Jesus says, Simon, you didn't give me any water to wash my feet. There was no one here to wash my feet. You're judging this woman, but like, it, I mean, it, it's a little bit of like, you're, you're pointing out someone else's sin when, when you didn't do the right thing. Um, and I, I just think that's, that, that's where, you know, sometimes I think we do feel that conviction from Jesus. He's the, he's the person that can convict us, right? He's perfect. He's the one, you know, and I think that's probably Simon, like, is like, Oh, like when the minute you're like, look, this is a terrible situation here. And, and Jesus is like, well, at least my feet are getting clean because right. you didn't take care of them. You know, right. I, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the, it, it's, con, it's a convic conviction in the middle of this kind of like cultural thing that, that Simon didn't even take care of. So. And you have to wonder, you know, what was Simon trying to, trying to do or with this refusal of taking care of his guests the way that was, very custom, customary was to welcome people into your home. One of the first things that you would do before eating was to wash your feet because of the filth that right. was on them. Um, you know, what, what was going on in his mind, in his heart here, where he's not even offering Jesus these basic um, hospitality customs. There was, there was judgment coming from Simon there too, where he was withholding and, and really not accepting Jesus for, who he was. So it's, it's right. a very interesting um, interaction between these three. Yeah. But ultimately what we're seeing is Jesus saying, Hey, I'm accepting this woman for who she is. And I am accepting you for who you are. But let's remember uh, 
what you're doing, how Simon is refusing to accept this woman based on what he knows and or assumes about her. Mm -hmm. And th this is one of the things Phil talked about this weekend as well. It, in verse 40, Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. So it's, it's not just a general acceptance of her lifestyle and everything else. There is this thing where Jesus says to her, like, you also have a need here. Like your sins need to be forgiven. And so I, I think that's, it, it, that is one of those things where, like, like we talked about this weekend, it, it is being accepting of others, but not having to condone everything, everything that they do. Yep. Yep. And, and, and that's the thing. That's what I love about Jesus's interactions with sinners. Um, and Sam Alberry said this when Phil interviewed him a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago, but he said, Jesus did not sin with sinners, but he ate with them. Yeah. He hung out with them. He spent time with them. He invested in them relationally. Um, he didn't sin with them and he never was content to leave them thinking that the lifestyle that they were leading was okay. He always made sure that there was, there was this idea that, Hey, I recognize who you are. I love you as you are, but your sins are forgiven. Hmm. And, and then he, to some, he'll say, go and do that. No more. Don't, don't do that anymore. Right. Um, but it's always with this, with this kindness. And we've talked before about how it's God's kindness that leads us to, to repentance. Hmm. And that's exactly what we see Jesus model. Totally. Um, so, Peggy asks here, was Simon a leader of the Pharisees? Seem, seems like he thought very highly of himself. Uh, I don't think he was a leader of the Pharisees. He was just kind of among the Pharisees, but he definitely did think highly of himself as many of them did. Yeah, I think all the Pharisees thought highly of themselves. That's what, that's what they prided themselves in as Pharisees. We follow the laws and the rules and everything else better than anybody else. That makes us better people. And Jesus is like, oh. Nope. <laughs> not so. Yeah. Not so. All right. Well, I'm going to do my best here. If you've not um, followed with us before, we ask five questions each day. And so let me get here. Um, the first question that we ask is what are the differences between our, how our culture defines accepting and welcoming one another and what we have read today? Uh, what do these verses give us into how God expects us to accept and welcome one another? What prevents us from accepting and welcoming one another? What sacrifices can you make to better accept and welcome one another? Because remember, one another's require sacrifice on our part uh, because they're not about us. And when we fail to accept and welcome others, what does it reveal about our own relationship with God? So Crystal's already been um, dropping your comments in here. I'm going to do my best to scroll back and uh, make sure I get these answered. But if you have thoughts and answers to those questions, please go ahead uh, and drop those in the chat here and Crystal will make sure they get into the document. But I'm gonna start at the bottom here, Kendall, and then uh, work my way back up. Gotcha. So Sarah answering uh, question number four, pausing and reflecting what God has done for us enables us to better love and accept others without loving and accepting others. How can we, whoops, how can we begin to understand others? Mm. So good. Mm. You know, there's, there's these assumptions that we come with and most of the time our assumptions are not right. 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 Um, and then Sarah answered number three, number three, uh, what prevents us from accepting and welcoming one another? Sarah says, uh, when we do not believe or accept or receive what God has done for us, we cannot do that for others. Hmm. That, that's good and true. Sometimes, sometimes even if we've accepted it for ourselves, we we don't allow it to be be there for other people. You know, it's like, well, I mean, Jesus loves me because I haven't done all the n nasty stuff they've done, or I haven't right. gotten, I haven't been to that point. I'm not like. Simon sitting there going, Jesus is accepting of me, but surely not this woman with what she's done and what she's been a part of. Like, even if we, even if we feel it for ourselves, we're, we're oftentimes not willing to share it with other people. Right. Right. We want to, we want to close fist that, yes. and I don't know if it's this idea that like grace and mercy is not, there's not enough of it and right. so I better hold on to it and not share. And God's saying like, 
I have infinite amounts of mercy, grace, love. Right. Well, I think it's our understanding of grace and mercy that we feel like we did something to receive it. Like we were good enough to receive it. And it was like, that's the whole point of grace and mercy. It doesn't matter what you've done, you receive it. So yeah. 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 Well, and Allie points out here, we really should replace Simon's name with our own and realize we are the ones rejecting the untouchables from Jesus's grace. We could also put our name and whatever our sin is for this woman too. Mm -hmm. And remember our, our sin is as, much a grievance to God as anyone's sin is. Yeah. Totally. We've just we've just made a sliding scale with our sin low on the list. Hmm. Um okay, so number four, uh Greg says, hold on, I gotta see what number four is. What sacrifices can you make to better accept and welcome one another? Greg says, overcoming my fear of going to unsafe places for ministry and making sure that I make no assumptions about what their story looks like. Uh, I think Greg has um, expressed some interest in going down to Sox Place. Sox Place, if you've not been down there, is one of the most incredible ministries I think that we get to partner with. Uh, but when you're when you're talking about homeless teens and having conversations with them, our natural instinct is to assume very much about their lifestyle and their choices based on what they look like and where they are. But if you actually have a real conversation with those kids, you're you're most often not not right. Right. Um, right. So, yeah, I think it takes it takes a certain level of uh, releasing that sense of control and security. But at the same time, it's an amazing opportunity to get down there. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are. I mean, the, that's constantly the, the kind of stuff that we, we deal with in, in ministry is, you know, people, people that need help sometimes live in rough places and in hard places and socks places, not for everybody. It is, it, it is a rough spot, you know, and you'll hear all kinds of flowery language and, you know, life stories and everything else. Um, but those are kids that, that need, like Doyle says, that need the love of a father, you know, when we do mean streets ministries, you know, knocking on doors of hotels down on Colfax. It, it, yeah, we, we're, we're smart about where we go and who we go with and being safe and all, and all of those things. But, but it, you know, it, there's as much ministry to your next door neighbor as there is to down on Sox place, down on mean streets. Um, it just looks different. And, you know, we have to get past some of that, that fear, but there's people that have more fear to go talk to their neighbor than they would to go down to Sox place and serve lunch for the afternoon, mm -hmm. you know, cause just being that vulnerable to the person that lives right next door versus going and spending an hour down at Sox place. They're sometimes it's more scary to go do that with your neighbor yeah. than it is to, to do that with the people. Uh, who are in a, in a tougher spot than us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, looking at number three, what prevents us from accepting and welcoming one another? Uh, Greg mm. says, sadly, some people won't accept and welcome others unless there is something that person can do for them. Uh, mm. And it goes right back to what you were saying, Kendall, that with God, there's nothing we can do. And yet we're right. accepted uh, right as we are. And yet we hold other people to this standard saying, Hey, I'll do for you as, but then you got to do something for me. Right. Right. And God is saying, that's actually not how I want this to work. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Couple more. Okay. So question number two, what do these verses give us and how, um, into how God expects us to accept and welcome one another? Uh, Crystal says fears should not be feared or avoided, but accepted and handled with love. Mm. That's good. Uh, and I think fear can prevent us and hold us back from so much because I don't know if it's unknown things or um, this idea that we are unable to control that, um, but our fear is pretty powerful if we let it Totally control us in those ways. Um, and then same question. Dom here says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Uh, we're going to hop into that 
verse a couple in a couple days too, and, and talk a little bit more about it, but hundred percent. Mm, yeah. Um, all right, let's see a couple more and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Eileen for question number three, what prevents us from accepting and welcoming one another? Eileen says in the gospels time and time again, Jesus calls out the Pharisee over the sinner. It seems Jesus is more displeased that the Pharisee doesn't see himself as a sinner and that he is better than a prostitute. When we think we are better than someone else, including the criminal, the murderer, etc., because we go to church, we read our Bible, and so on, it is time to do a heart check with God. It is a daily reminder for me. It's good. Mm. It's good. So good. All right. And then Dom adds on to that. Uh, definitely fear we assign lots of value to how the other responds too many times we allow this to influence what we think of ourselves. And then Leslie here adds, fear prevents us from being vulnerable. We are we are doing to open up, or we are going to open up and accept, uh, what are we doing to open up and accept one another? Good question, for sure. All right. Um, Janelle, she says, I love the way Jesus addressed Simon with the parable in order for him to understand personally what Jesus was all about. And that's what Jesus does, especially in these intimate moments uh, with people, it becomes very personal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then question number five, uh, when we fail to accept and welcome others, what does it reveal about our relationship with God? Um, Dom says, it shows that I'm not growing or understanding what Jesus says about others and the importance of sh showing his love to them. We're his ambassadors. And, and we are, yeah. uh, you know, we, we, we kicked this whole thing off with Jesus saying, um, people will know that you're my followers by the way that you love one another. So what does that look like? And, and if we say that accept one another is a way that we love one another, then how are we doing that? What does that look like in our lives today? Yeah. So great, great job, um, everybody. So just a reminder before we uh, pray, it's Monday. So we've got a couple days, Kendall, before for Aurora. Uh, just like insider info, because this is kind of um, something that you're, you know a little bit about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when, what are ways that people can get involved with For Aurora? Yeah, so um, multiple ways. First of all, we have te teams that are working kind of throughout the week to, to get things ready for Thursday uh, when we do our meal planning, when we do our meals, giving out meals and groceries. So uh, there's groups that come on Wednesday and help unload the truck. There's groups that come early on Thursday and help start setting up. There's groups that come Thursday later and help clean up and organize things. There's groups of people that come and cook food. So all of those opportunities are there to serve. Um, all you have to do is send an email to forora at ehills.org like it says there. Uh, the other thing you can do, super simple, is go on to forora, uh, ehills.org slash forora and look at our shopping list. And um, People, we, we get a lot of food from the food bank. What we don't normally get from the food bank is all of those staples that that we need each and every week. It's it's more difficult to get the kind of common things. So people have been bringing all of those things, peanut butter and jelly, cereal, um, pasta, macaroni and cheese, all that. People have been bringing that, putting it in the baskets outside of church, and then we get to distribute that to families as well. The food bank, we get crazy stuff, right? We get all the, the oddities and fun stuff. Um, but the kind of staples, normally we, we rely on the generosity of everyone, uh, who brings those and donates those to us through the, through the baskets at church. So it's good. Yeah. Uh, if people are bringing donations, bring those in by Wednesday. Uh, you can actually bring them Monday, uh, through Friday, nine to four. Cause then if we, if we don't get them in time for Thursday, we just start the restock for the, the following week. So anytime. Awesome. So um, if you want to help, need help, 
or know someone who needs help, yes. um, please follow for Aurora on our socials. And then like Kendall said, if you have specific questions, email for Aurora at ehills.org. Um, it's an amazing opportunity that we've had to partner with the food bank in this season. Uh, and to watch the way that God has moved through what's going on has just been absolutely incredible. So thank you to everyone who's been involved. It has been a huge blessing to so many. So good. So good. Yep. yep. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you for sticking with us. I know it's different without Phil, like no nerd alerts today. I don't, you know, I don't know what to say. Maybe we just need to, I'll try for one tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> I can't, I can't compete on that level though. So I know, I know. I mean, it's just out of our league. Like we, we're just going to stay in our lane, yeah, uh, but thanks yeah. for hanging out with us tomorrow. We're going to continue the conversation. Uh, we're going to talk about what it looks like to provide equal care mm. for one another. I think that's something we probably don't think about too often. Um, but before we go today, I'm going to pray for us. Um, Crystal has been dropping prayer requests in the document. And then we're going to head out. Uh, God, thank you so much for this opportunity once again to be together, to gather, to uh, challenge ourselves and our hearts and our minds and probably the way that we've thought for many years about what it looks like to accept one another. Uh, we thank you so much that you have accepted us right where we were uh, and right as we are today. We thank you that you do not turn us away, that you do not allow assumptions um, to get in the way of the way that you love us and care for us and accept us. God, I pray that you would help us to continue to break down the barriers that we have put up between us and other people. Uh, God, that we would see them the way that you see them as image bearers of who you are. Uh, that we would remember how much you love them and that we are to do the same. God, I pray that you would give us wisdom and that you would give us opportunity to put this into practice, whether it's here uh, in our normal stomping grounds or if you are stretching us to uh, go downtown or go someplace else, God, that we would bring um, this conversation with us and that we would keep it at the forefront of our minds. We continue to pray for our world um, as we see so much unrest and uh, so much craziness. Uh, we continue to pray for healing for those that are sick, um, for a solution to the COVID problem, God, that there would be a vaccination or a cure or something that would be on the horizon uh, sooner rather than later. God, for all of the civil unrest, uh, that you would um, bring unity in that, not uniformity. Um, we don't want to be robots who all think the same thing, but that we would come to a place where we can recognize and value um, our differences. God, we specifically uh, thank you so much for um, the way that you have just met Vernon and Sarah uh, in the stuff that is going on with them. Um, God, that you would be with Vernon today as he is figuring some more things out uh, that this antibiotic would uh, be working for him and that he would start to feel better. Uh, and we also are so thankful uh, that um, Vern got the position um, and that it looks like things are going to be uh, working out better for him. Uh, we just thank you so much. This has been something that we've been praying for. And God, we're just so thankful that you have met Vern right where he was and that uh, you have provided for them. And God, we continue praying for our first responders, um, fire, police, uh, and those um, who are paramedics. Uh, God, it's just been a, a rocky time for so many. And we just pray that you would continue to provide protection. Uh, and we also pray that you would just continue to meet us where we are and uh, meet those where they are. God, we love you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Everyone, well, thank you so much for joining us. It has been fun. Kendall, thank you. I hope you'll come back. <laughs> Please come I'll back be here tomorrow. tomorrow I promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you've got any, any more questions, keep dropping those in the chat, uh, and we'll make sure we come back and answer those tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. See you guys.